I'd like to just acknowledge Peter. Uh, still remember my first game as a St Kilda player. You came out and kicked five against the Dogs. Uh, never forget it. Larger than life as a young player coming into the club. Well done, mate. Maxi, uh, we remain great, great mates. Uh, never beaten. I don't think I ever saw you beaten on the footy field. You're an incredible player and a great teammate. And Milne, uh, just so proud of you, mate. You know, you, you just you actually forget how good he was. And then you see those highlights and you, you just shake your head. Uh, just an incredible player, mate. So congratulations to, to all three of those guys and your families. Uh, absolutely well deserved. Uh, but it's my great honour to talk about uh, one of my great mates. Very few players across the history of our great game have been as universally respected as Lenny Hayes. Lenny's record on the field speaks for itself. 297 games as a one-club St Kilda player, club captain, three-time best and fairest, and a further five top three finishes, just to highlight his, his consistency and level of high performance. Three All-Australian Guernseys, a Norm Smith medal, the most tackles in AFL history, and if you didn't spray the umpires so much, mate, you probably would have had a brown low in there too. <laughs> but it wasn't just his incredible list of accomplishments that make Lenny so impressive. It was a constant class with which Lenny approached his AFL career that commanded such appreciation and respect from the entire AFL community, not just St Kilda people. Opposition players, opposition coaches, everyone loved and respected and admired Lenny Hayes. A gentleman off the field, on the field, there was nothing that Lenny couldn't or wouldn't be prepared to do for the team and his teammates. Lenny Hayes was scary brave. We've all seen it countless times. He was the kind of brave that, as a teammate, he made you flinch when he went into a contest. You know, you'd just you'd stand there and you would just flinch. Such was his ferocity and intensity with which he attacked the uh, contest and his desire to compete. It was second to none. His toughness well, was on show for, from his first game when he was bowled over by the shinboner of the century and got straight back up to his last game when he came out and laid eight tackles in the first quarter. But his, his toughness was probably best exemplified. And I know, Lenny, you're probably si he's sitting there shaking his, shaking his head because you hate people talking about you, but just you've got to suck it up for tonight. <laughs> That's just the sort of person he is. Um, it was best exemplified in, in 2006 when Lenny hurt his knee during a game against North Melbourne. And he played the game out. He, he didn't complain. He got a little bit of treatment. And a subsequent scan later confirmed that he'd torn his ACL. And as teammates, we, you know, when we heard the news that he was then going to be out for the rest of the year, I mean, we just shook our head, not because you know, we were going to be missing Lenny, which obviously we were devastated about, but just how can you just be that tough that you're able to play the game out? It's just incredible. The same again when, after winning the best and fairest in 2002, he just checked in for a minor heart surgery in the off-season. He'd won a best and fairest only a week earlier. And, of course, such was Lenny's nature, his selfless nature his humble nature, but he played it down. Um, you know, and by that stage, none of us were surprised. That was just Lenny. He was also sublimely skilled, Lenny. I think we, you know, we talk about his toughness, we talk about his courage, we talk about his fierceness and his competitiveness, but he was the, one of the most skillful players going around. There was no one you'd rather have passing you the ball as a forward. His sidestep made many a would-be tackler look like they were wearing ice skates. And as a finisher, well, none of us will remember, uh, none of us will forget, rather, his goal in the 2010 Grand Final. It was out of his distance. There was no way he should have kicked it. But Lenny Hayes found a way. And that's just who he was, just when his team needed it the most. As a Saints man, Lenny was so much more than a great player. Anyone that called Lenny a teammate would attest to how fortunate they were to do so. We were all incredibly lucky to call Lenny Hayes a teammate. He was our spiritual leader for a long period of time, the teammate that you'd want to go to war with, the teammate you would call in a crisis, the teammate that you would want your sons to grow up and be like. 
He was a teammate that you could always have fun with, whether it was on the weekend or on a footy trip. He just had such great balance. And he was probably the only teammate you would have been happy to take your sister out on a date. <laughs> and that is the ultimate compliment in a football club. Uh, until he met the lovely Tara, of course, and they created their, their beautiful family with Hunter and Jacob. Lenny Hayes was the ultimate Saints warrior, the ultimate teammate. We all love Lenny Hayes, an overwhelmingly deserving inductee into the St Kilda Hall of Fame. Well done, Lenny. Just take a moment to admire the great man's work. I am Goddard slid it to Hayes. What a magnificent step from Lenny. Had to be careful with the handball. Gave it to Easton. Watch out. Oh, ferocious stuff, Lenny Hayes. Lenny Hayes tries to keep it. Down goes Lenny Hayes, but he picks himself up. Grimes did well not to overcommit. Here's Hayes. Beautiful round one around two. Lenny Hayes, you star. He's pumped and hard. He's pumped and low. He's kicked the goal. Welcome Nathan Burke on stage to present Lenny with his Hall of Fame medal. Wow. Um, thank you, Rui and, and Berkey. Um, pretty special night. Bit of pressure on this speech. Apparently, I didn't talk a lot uh, during my footy career. Um, but look, all the guys that have spoken tonight have been um, fantastic. So thanks to Spider and Maxi and, and Milne for the years of friendship, um, for playing alongside each other. It's something that I'll cherish forever. So well done tonight. Well done. Um, got a, a couple of minutes here, so I'll, I'll uh, do my best. Um, look, I'm incredibly humbled to be up here. I received an email the other day, and it um, had the details about tonight's function, you know, usual stuff, you know, the date, the time, the venue, you know, dress code, which is, it's good to see Stephen Baker the first time in 15 years at a Saints function, he's actually adhered to it, so well done, mate. Um, you know, near the bottom of the email, it mentioned that it um, wasn't going to be a Q&A, you know, I had to make a speech tonight. Um, so I thought, okay, yeah, I can do that in five minutes. I should be fine. So uh, I went down and, and grabbed a coffee just down in Concord near where I live in, in Sydney. And I said to Tara, look, I'll, I should be back in about half an hour. Well, uh, about three and a half hours later and having experienced a whole range of emotions, the main thing I kept coming back to was that um, this football club is a great club, you know, made up of great people. I've always... Um, been really grateful for the opportunity to pull on the red, white and black. And look, everyone who's been up here tonight has spoken about John Beveridge and, you know, I'm no different. You know, I, I want to thank you, mate, for taking a chance on a, a skinny, pale, freckly-faced, slow inside midfielder from the suburbs of Sydney. You know, it was a childhood dream of mine to play at the highest level. Um, and hopefully I repaid that faith you showed in me, mate, back in 1998. So thank you. Um, look, there's no doubt, um, early on in my time at the football club, you know, there's some really hard days. There was, um, you know, we had a few changes of coaches, you know, we weren't winning many games, but the more time I spent at the club, I began to understand what the club was about and where we'd been and, and where we wanted to get to. And I knew the history, um, but for me, that was, that was something I thrived on. It's always, you know, something that really motivated me. It was part of the challenge. You know, I wanted to be part of the next group that could stand up there next to those boys from 66 and, and hopefully give our supporters and all the people that love our club something to be really proud of. You know, unfortunately um, for us, we weren't able to achieve um, the ultimate goal, but I feel really lucky to have played in the year that I did. And I feel like tonight my acknowledgement, you know, should be just as much about my teammates as, as it is mine. 
Because I, I truly believe if you're going to fulfill your potential as a player, you need people around you. You need the support around you. You can't do it on your own. And I certainly had that in spades. I'm going to rattle off a few names here. So bear with me. Now, every good midfielder knows that um, life is made a lot easier if you've got a quality ruckman. Unfortunately for me, I didn't have many. Um, <laughs> so take that, Spot. Um, no, look, I did. I'm, I'm only joking. Look, I had Spider for a couple of years, and then later, later on, after Grant left, Grant didn't rate Ruckman. Um, you know, Michael Gardner and Stephen King came in, so, you know, they were putting on a platter every week. You know, alongside me in the midfield, some great names, Robert Harvey, Burke, Thompson, Powell, Jones, Aussie, and Clint. Um, <laughs> Luke Ball, Del Sano, Goddard, Montagna, and more recently, Armitage and Stephen. You know, up forward, there was Lowe, there was Gehrig, Hamill, Rewalt and Kaczynski to, tick, to kick the ball to, with Milne and Snides cleaning up the scraps at their feet. And as any ball-hunting midfielder knows, the real heroes are the guys down back, and, and Lee's already mentioned them tonight, who more often than not picked up my man when, you know, occasionally I got a bit disorientated on the football field and forgot how to run back defensively. And I'm um, sitting on the same table as Dal. Dal, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, guys like Hudgeton and Baker, Fisher, Blake, Wilt, Dempster and Geary. <laughs> I always felt like they had my back and all of our backs there in the midfield. So to all my teammates that I've mentioned, and there's, you know, there's plenty that I haven't, I just really want to thank you for the years of friendship, the years of support, and for making a pretty tough, uncompromising game a lot of fun, a hell of a lot of fun. So thank you. Uh, along with the players, so many other people impacted my time in a positive way. You know, whether that be coaches, you know, medical staff, sponsors or supporters. Um, I see a lot of you here tonight. It's, it's been a great night and I know I don't see enough of you often enough. Um, but the bond's still there. It's still really strong. Um, to my parents, you know, Dad, thanks for passing down your passion to me about this great game and for also teaching me to kick. You know, although some might argue that you only probably get about a 6 out of 10 for that. Uh, Mum, you know, there's no doubt that the strong values you instilled in me as a child held me in really good stead throughout my football career and now as a father to Hunter and Jacob. So thank you for everything that you've done for me. And uh, to my wife, Tara, you know, for your continued love and support. You know, most of all for being understanding of my moodiness during the footy season whether that be as a player or now as an assistant coach. But like the other guys, um, without that support um, of your loved ones, um, you know, you certainly wouldn't be standing up here, so thank you. <laughs> and just to finish off, I um, just want to wish, wish uh, Richo, all his coaching staff and all the current day players all the best for this season and, and the upcoming seasons ahead. Um, I thought you had a great start last week and just really looking forward to seeing how you guys go about it this year and beyond. So. Thanks, everyone, and, and go Saints.